Hello. Um, in this video, we're going to go over the Understand Switches objective for the MTA 98366 Networking Fundamentals Certification. So some of the things that we want to define here, uh, the terms hub, bridge, and switch. So a, a hub is the connecting point, remember, for a physical star. But a hub typically operates more as a logical bus topology. So this is one of the um, early networking devices that we use that we really don't see much anymore. But I want you to understand a hub because one of the things that you need to know for the test is how a hub and a switch is different. Um, the next thing that, we, that we're going to define is a bridge. Um, we, again, don't see bridges very, very much anymore um, because we've replaced the hubs and switches with bridges. But if we were using a bridge, the, the purpose of a bridge is to connect um, two or more uh, segments of the subnet. And um, so basically we, we would connect two hubs. And then a switch, a switch is essentially a multi-port bridge that uh, filters the, the information going over, from, over the internet, over the, I'm sorry, over the subnet based on MAC addresses. Um, some other terms that we want to know is unmanaged switch. So an unmanaged switch is a, um, a very basic switch. It's, com it's something that we has what we call plug and play cap uh, cap uh, capability. What that means is you, you're just going to plug this directly in to your network and uh, power it on, and it's going to start learning the, the, the devices, the hosts on the network. Um, it, there's not really anything that you configure with it. It's less expensive, but it also doesn't have the ability to configure um, security, uh, like your security protocols on it, and you can't set up VLANs on an unmanaged switch. Um, then we have the managed switch, and so the managed switch has to be manually configured when you function. If you hook it up to, the, to the, your network and turn it on, it's just going to sit there um, because it requires you to set up uh, uh, you know, con to configure the, the switch. Um, it is a lot more expensive than an unmanaged switch, but what this expense um, brings us is the ability to configure different security sec uh, settings. Um, one of the things that we can do is we can actually uh, create a dynamic MAC filtering, so it kind of helps us to eliminate some of the, um, the MAC attacks that we see. Uh, also, it lets us create uh, virtual local area networks or VLANs. Um, also, something that we're going to see is something is a term uh, layer three switch. A layer three switch is also called a multi-layer switch, and the reason is uh, so switches work on the layer two of the OSI model. And so, if you have a layer three switch, then it's a, it's a layer two switch that's reaching into that layer three. So we have multiple layers, and that's where we get the name multi-layer switch. Um, and as, as as I just said, a layer three switch is capable of reading the network at networking addressing and routing the packets between subnets. So um, sometimes in some of our our uh, especially some of our smaller networks, we may uh, implement a layer three switch or a multi-layer switch instead of a switch and a router. So this is a hub, and as we can see, so the hub is just it's a central device, and so this is a physical star, and we just connect the, the different nodes to it. Um, and when we have one of the hosts send a message, it's going to go into the hub, and then it's going to broadcast that out to all of the other hosts. And again, this is very much this this is the uh, that logical bus topology that we covered before. Because um, remember, in a logical bus topology, all of the hosts are connected to the sa the same wire. And so, what happens on a on a logical bus topology is the message comes in and it's broadcast to every uh, to to every node that's on the network. Um, a a hub, it operates on the layer one of the OSI model because it's not really doing any filtering or switching. It's simply just connecting uh, the devices with a, with a physical wire. Now, one of the things that we would see is, uh, number one, if we would fill up the ports on our, on our hub, or maybe we wanted to create different segments. Uh, we would have two different hubs, and we could connect those hubs using a bridge. 
and the bridges were configured in such a way that it would not um, forward the traffic through uh, from one side to the other if it was not intended. So let's say that um, you know, over here on the left, we've got a, a signal that's coming in from one of these hosts. That hub is just going to repeat that signal out to all the connected hosts. Um, and so then that's also going to go over to the bridge. Well, now let's say that um, uh, so this bridge is actually operating on layer two. And so it's going to take a look at that MAC address and it's going to know that the MAC, whether or not that MAC address exists on on the on the other side of that, the, the bridge. If not, it's not going to forward the message through. It'll just stop the message. Um, if the message is intended for the second segment, then the bridge is going to go ahead and forward that message to both. Um, uh, it's going to forward the message from the first segment to the second. Now, what we see is a switch is essentially just kind of a, a multi-port um, uh, a multi-port bridge. And so uh, just as before, and so remember we, we talked about it, especially like an unmanaged switch. When we first plug it in, it's going to operate very much like a hub. So any message that's coming in is just going to be broadcast out to all of the other nodes. But what's going to happen is it's actually going to start learning the MAC addresses and it's going to match up the MAC addresses of the hosts with the ports on the switch. And as it as it um, builds its MAC address table, it's going to start forwarding that message only to the, the, the only to the port that is that that message is supposed to travel on. And because of that, we see that it operates a lot more um, like a bridge than a hub because it's allowing us to filter that that broadcast based on the MAC address. Um, and we would call it a multi-port bridge because we can do this multiple times. We're not just filtering from one to the other or eliminating one of the MAC addresses. We can actually have um, multiple um, bridged connections in our subnet. Um, another thing that a switch does, and this would be, um, of, a, of course, our managed switch, is it allows us to create uh, multiple broadcast domains. And what we mean by that is we can actually separate into VLANs. And so you see here we have the switch in the middle. And if you look very closely, we've set up uh, the first two ports on the VLAN 2. You see the little 2 um, designating that those ports are set up in VLAN 2. And then the next two ports are set up in VLAN 10. And so what's going to happen on this um, on this switch is essentially it's going to treat this like two different physical switches. So any activity that comes in from VLAN two is only going to be route or is only going to be uh, propagated through that VLAN. And so even if there were a broadcast signal, it's not going to spread it to the other ports on the switch because it's coming from essentially a different subdomain. Um, and then you see, so, so, and that's we can. The reason why we set up VLANs is number one uh, for security. Uh, like here we here we see we have a VLAN for sales and a VLAN for engineering, and this separates those functions so that uh, we don't have our sales guys, you know, um, have having unnecessary access to our engineering information, and vice versa. Our engineering guys uh, they can't go get our sales list. Um, another reason we would do this besides security is just our uh, to limit traffic. So as we create more broadcast domains, we reduce the amount of traffic on each one of those. Um, just using this as an example, if we were to put all of these on the same LAN, we would have four um, we would have four devices on this on this network, and so. Um, any broadcast traffic, um, you know, any traffic that we're using in general is we're, we're going to have four devices worth of traffic. Now that we've split this into two VLANs, we have two devices worth of traffic on each of the VLANs. Um, something else that we want to talk about is redundancy. So here, if we have if we uh, have two switches, again, um, typically we would have multiple switches if we ran out of space on our original switch. And uh, we actually have ports on those switches that allow us to send a signal, a, a faster uh, transmission signal from one switch to the other so that they act very much like, um, like one switch. Now, what we what we kind of want to do with this, though, is, is so if we were only to if we were to just run one line um, from from between the switches, if that line were to fail or one of those ports were to fail, now we've 
we've separate, you know, we, we've we've uh, severed the connection between these two parts of our subnet. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll put in a a second line, um, and and so that way we have some redundancy on the connection between the two switches. Um, and so then as this first switch sends out a signal, it goes out through both uh, through through both lines over to the second switch. And then that, that signal is then propagated through this network. Now the problem comes is that now, so this, this, uh, so we have it coming in through both, both lines from the first switch. This second switch is just going to send it out to all of, to all of the other, uh, network nodes. And so this, this very first port, um, is going to send it over to port two, which is our bridge back to our first switch. And the second port is just going to send that message also not only to the other uh, nodes on the network, but also over to port one, which is going to send that back to the first switch. And what's going to happen is then it's just going to keep bouncing back and forth. And so because of that, we actually have something called spanning tree protocol. And with that, what, what, that, what we do with that is we actually tell the switches, hey, these are both uh, trunk lines coming from another switch. And so we we tell it to to just listen on on one of the lines, and um, then that way it's not propagating that traffic back and forth. And then if that first line goes down, it picks up the second one. Um, we can also do we we can also then um, you another uh, thing that we can do through spanning tree pro protocol is we can actually then kind of group those those lines together. And so instead of using the throughput of one line, we could actually be using multiple lines because it understands that we that 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 message that's coming through both of them is actually intended to be one message. All right, so that's just some basics on understanding switches for our MTA certification.